The Cat's Whiskers podcast is proudly sponsored by the Bunkers Hill Hockley. Don't miss Panthers game day offers, including Coors Light at £2.50 a pint. Hello and welcome to Ask TCW podcast. It's the 21st of February and we will be answering your questions after this short musical intro. Yes, hello everybody and thank you for joining us on this Ask TCW podcast. My name is Aaron Lord and I'm delighted to say that answering your questions this week from the Cat's Whiskers crew are Tina Taylor. Hiya. Hiya. And Anton Marijuan. Hello. Hello. And I'm delighted to say that uh, many, many weeks ago we had one half of the Elite League's media team in, but we're delighted to say that this this week's turn is uh, Craig Anderson. So, good evening, Craig. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Are you well? well yeah. I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. Um, we've got some interesting questions for you to answer. I think that's possibly the best way to uh, <laughs> to, to put it. Um, there's some, obviously, questions in there that are solely for you, but we'll get the gang to answer them as well. But hopefully it'll make out for a very good show. But if you are listening to us live and you would like to ask Craig a question or Tina or Ant, uh, then please do get in touch via Twitter. It's at Cast Whiskers TV and just use the hashtag AskTCW. But we will get on with something that we weren't able to do this week because we had a podcast. Uh, so we didn't do our usual Monday uh, review show. But please do listen to the podcast if you, if you do wish. But this is TCW Player of the Week. Now, um, just going to get straight into it. Third, by your votes, was Mike Garnett. Second, very close between second and first. Can you guess who it is, folks, if you're listening? Can you guess? Um, Second was Josh Tetlow. Now, I must add that Tetlow was in the lead until the last few votes. So that nasty man, Luke Pitha, has stolen the crown from Josh Tetlow, but the TCW Player of the Week does go to Luke Pitha. So congratulations, Luke. Obviously had a very, very good weekend. Uh, Now, just very quickly, uh, before we kind of get into the questions, folks, Tina, I'll come to you. Pitha had a very, very good weekend, but, you know, Tetlow kind of, you know, are you surprised that he was close to winning? Not really. I think he stole the show a little bit. I, I, you know, I mean, after Saturday's game, we, we would, you know, we were seeing him on Saturday, sort of maybe every, you know, third or fourth shift or whatever. And uh, when it was sort of getting tight, um, I, I, I actually, was it? I think it was after we lost uh, Vaskivo. I, I, I think we talked about it on Sunday. I, it, it was an opportunity for, for us to see him a little bit more, perhaps. But um, on Sunday. We, we did. He was on regular shifts. End of. You know, no messing around. Get him straight out there. And he's it's brilliant. I think he's he's really endeared himself to the fan base. I think that you know the the, the Panthers faithful have you know seeing the potential that he's got and you know really it really sort of embraced that and uh, really encouraged him so uh, you know it it reflects in the voting I mean I know not every single person uh, you know who's a Panthers fan will have voted in that poll but it's a decent sample size and I think it is very very well deserved I am I am I've I've been in in the Tetlo corner for you know since since day one of his uh, of his Panthers uh, his, his his Panthers career, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm absolutely made up that he is he's taken the opportunity and he is absolutely running with it. And I I'm fingers crossed that he's going to go up this weekend to Scotland. 
fingers crossed and I suppose we haven't got long to wait really with our first game being on Friday night but shall we get into the questions now and we will go to Phil Rawlings first question and Phil says is there a risk that both Neil Black's affiliations will not make the playoffs and would that cause him to make wholesale changes now Craig is being our guest and obviously um you know, you you kind of comment commentate on Brayhead games, don't you? And you've had a lot of sort of experience with the Scottish teams up, up, up north for many years. Um, you know, do you think there is a risk that both Brayhead and the Nottingham Panthers won't make the playoffs? I think it's a little precarious, but you're really looking at the teams at the bottom um, to, to hit any you know some great form in these final few weeks of the season. Um, Coventry have started picking up results again. Dundee were going really well, but then they've lost the last six. Now, I would say Milton Keynes and Edinburgh, um, where they are, I would say they're they're a little bit out of it. I mean, Edinburgh mathematically are out of it anyway. Milton Keynes, mm, I, th- I think it, they, they would need some kind of miracle to, to get themselves back into into sort of top eight reckoning. I think they may have done enough. Um, being honest, I mean, Panthers have got that pedigree throughout their team. You know, I think for them to not reach the playoffs at all would be a complete disaster. And same for Brayhead as well. There are expectations um, on the clan as well with the, you know, the fan base they've got up there and the, and the players they've got as well. I can't see them not missing out on the playoffs, but unless both Dundee and Coventry hit rich form in these final few weeks of the season, I don't think there's any reason to panic for either team. Okay, okay. Um, and I'll come to you on, on, on that one as well. Um, I think there's a real chance that neither of them will be in the final four. Um, I think, I know I was worried uh, a couple of weeks ago about, you know, I was looking over his shoulders at eighth place as far as from a Panthers perspective. Um, I think, obviously, since then, we've had the news that Corey's going, uh, which seems to have lit in a spark under the team. Two fantastic results at the weekend. Um, if we can carry on, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough weekend ahead. But if, you know, you think, Another four points this weekend, maybe. I, th- I think that'll be enough. Um, Brayhead? Oh, I don't, I don't know. They're a very up-and-down team, aren't they? Just, the only predictable thing about Brayhead is that you can't really predict what they're going to do. So, Tell me about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's a real, a real chance that they could actually lose out. Obviously, Coventry have put on a bit of a spurt, like Craig's already mentioned. Um so yeah, it's going to be you know it's going down to the wire, which obviously keeps people interested, um, and I'll hopefully keep people going through the door. Uh, Tina, can you see both Neil Black's teams being you know involved in the playoffs? I think um, Ant pointed out something quite crucial there. Uh, you know, we, we we've had a couple of good results. Uh, recently which has you know maybe kind of lifted us away from the danger zone just a little bit so we're probably feeling a little better about our chances now than we did say maybe a week or two weeks ago uh, you know and, and, and like like Craig says it, it would be it, it would be alarming for both teams to miss out it would it would definitely be a, a, something of a, of a disaster for us you know especially given and we keep coming back to this, given how well we were doing at the beginning of the season. Uh, you know, Brayad unfortunately didn't have a great start, and they've they've kind of it's been it, yeah, like Ant says, it's been inconsistent. So, uh, I, yeah, I, I I would question whether either of them will end up in final four, like Ant says. But I think finally, I think I think at least one of the one of the teams will. will get to final eight and just just to answer the 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 other half of the of the question Mm. i think if if both teams were to miss out uh then yes it would be a problem but i don't think both teams missing out on elite league playoffs would be the, the the deciding factor on any particular changes now um one of the, one of the things I mean this this question has come from a different it was one that we couldn't we didn't get time to answer on another show, so it was mm. asked before uh, Corey Nielsen was announced uh, as as you know intending to leave the Panthers at the end of the season, so you know I, I, that that is a major change in itself and that has obviously not uh, it's not been brought about because of uh, you know because of whether or not we qualify for playoffs because you know there's still a chance we can or we can't. So, uh, you know, uh, the th- and the thing I, I would say with Brayhead 
is you know they, they've had a fair few challenges this season they've had they started the season with uh, less imports than they should have and they have a rookie coach and I don't you know we, I, I, I like, I'd, I'd like to think that, that ice hockey is not quite as cutthroat as football I mean it definitely isn't because you, you could see a case for, for, for both coaches you know having have been you know set, given their marching orders some time ago had this been you know like a, a football mentality but you know it, it, it I think <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know what the general feeling of the Brayhead fan base is, and maybe you know Craig can shine some light on that. But it, it it's, it, it might be worth giving tri- John Tripp another, another season. Maybe you know the, the, the next season they do start with a full set of imports, and they can get going from from the off. You know, they can really make a statement. Uh, you know, to, to to start the season rather than you know having to to play catch up from a poor start. Well, let me just I mean, say, sorry, let me just interrupt. In regards to Brayhead, you, you're talking about John Tripp, the second season where he'd have more time to prepare. He was given a two year deal last year. So, oh, OK. Well, yeah. That's... And, and we, always, we always knew that the first season under Ryan Finnerty, given that Ryan had been in charge for four years, was always going to be a transitional period. A new coach, a whole new set of imports, completely new. So this season was always, I think this season was always, not, not so much written off, that's maybe a, not the way to put it, but certainly, you know, a chance for John Tripp to feel his way into the, the British side of things, get his own team together, get his own players, get them adapted to the British game as well. I mean, for all, I mean, I don't think Brayhead would, would fire John, you know, even if they, they didn't make the playoffs. They've invested in him and they've invested in him quite heavily. Um, you know, if it was if they were in the position, say Edinburgh were in at the moment, I dare say that might be looked upon a little bit differently. But knowing what I know, John was signed on a, on a two year deal and I think they would stick with him, whether without the playoffs. I mean, because it's, it was quite a statement, wasn't it, really, in a way, that they didn't go for just somebody that knew the league, you know, sort of, that was, you know, an old name, etc. They did really go out there, and, and it seemed that they did a lot of research, you know, maybe spoke to a lot of people, but to bring somebody in to, to the league that doesn't have the experience of the elite league, sure, you have to give them time, don't you? You can't just expect them to pick it up and 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 really you know kind of hit the ground running they are going to take time to to settle in surely absolutely and you know you're talking about john who spent a good part of his career in germany um playing and, and coaching there as well and, and as tina pointed out he is you know all things being considered a rookie coach this is the first full season he's had as a coach so he's going to make mistakes along the way as well and it's important to remember that and I think too many people are quick to jump on that. You know, you see some of the, the reactions and things like that you get post-game. And that, that's going to happen everywhere. You know, the, the, a team that, that's expected to do better than they have done, that kind of reaction is always going to happen. But Brayhead made a statement, as you say there, by the fact that he brought in a guy like John with the, the limited experience he has and have given him time. They believe in him. They do believe in him, which is why they, they gave him a two-year deal in the first place. And that's why I think... to. To, to, to bin him after only a year, I think, wouldn't be fair on him. Mm. Well, as the standings are at the moment, obviously the Panthers are in seventh place on 51 points, the Brea clan in eighth on 43, and then you're looking at the Blaze, just one below on 39, and then the Stars on 38. But obviously there's um, a few games to be played until they're all level, but I'm sure really, I, I, I mean, you're looking at Panthers, you'd hope that we, we've got enough there, but maybe a three-way fight between the clan, the Blaze and the Dundee Stars for that final playoff spot. But we will move on to the next question. And basically this becomes from one of the player of the week uh, comments. And this says, do you think winning the playoffs to qualify for the Continental Cup is the only way we will be able to keep the top imports we currently have? Um, And I'll come to you, obviously, Corey, you know, as we've mentioned and spoke about on a few podcasts now, leaving the Panthers at the end, that might mean a wholesale sweep. Or do you think if we do win the playoffs, I mean, hey, we haven't been qualified, but there we go. Um, we might be able to keep some of the imports that we currently have. And would you want to, really? Um, this, is a, this is a really difficult question. It's the second part about wanting to or not, because we've struggled. You know, domestically again this season but then you look at the players you know top down uh, to be honest I can't see much wrong 
with without any of them. Yes, there's some frustrating moments and what have you, but you then balance it up with what that player can do. And if to be fair, if if we'll use Mok Shansev as an example, if he turned it on night in, night out, like we know he can, he wouldn't be playing in the Elite League. He'd be playing at a much higher level. Um, so, you know, I don't... I'm, I really, I'm really struggling because I know there's a thread on the cage that's asking the same thing: which players would you want back, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I don't think I'd change too much if I'm perfectly honest. So, if uh, you, if so, going back to kind of like the the first part of the question, if we were to win the playoffs and qualify for the Continental Cup, do you think more imports would be inclined to stay with the Panthers? Uh, oh, toughy. Um. I suppose that's asking. I mean, this year we had the Champions League to offer him. Could you offer him the UEFA Cup? Uh, I don't know. I think uh... Continental Cup. Come on, Ant. we're not. You know, look away from the TV. I know, man, you are playing, but we're talking hockey. Um, I've got it on BBC Sport. Sorry. Um, uh, well, can, well, well, can I? Yeah, can I? Can I just? Can I just jump in? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me just jump in and save Ant a little bit. Um, Thank you. <laughs> but I, I I don't have I, I mean I don't have the same answer. I mean one one thing I I I will say is yeah obviously the 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 CHL was a massive draw. You know, could you have seen us getting? You know some of some of the caliber of players that we have. If we hadn't been in the CHL, yeah, probably not. You know, I mean, one one thing we are going to miss is is the recruitment talent that Corey Nielsen has brought brought to the Panthers. You know, I mean, we, we could we could be here for for you know a whole show in itself talking about some of our our favourites. You know that that Corey Nielsen has recruited, and you know we we could spend a good half hour to an hour just talking about the, those you know those guys who get signed by the Panthers and. And, and everybody goes, oh, he doesn't look, look that much. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll pick out my favourite example, Eric Werner. Everybody looked at that, <laughs> that, that, at that hockey CV and just went, well, he's going to be rubbish. And he wasn't. He was a gem. And that's one of the things... That's one of the, th- the things we're going to miss. But I think it was recruitment was made a lot easier with having you know the CHL you know carrot to dangle in front of them. Um. I think there is also there is a lot to be said for um players enjoying where they are liking the you know where they are the organization the city uh, the fans the style of the game you know etc cetera, etc cetera, all those cliche ding 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 things that they they say in interview you know heard nothing but good things and and, and, and such mm-hmm. the like so you know some of the some of the imports that we dangled the CHL carrot in front of, maybe have now got here and thought, you know what, actually, I really like it here, and I'd really like to give it another go. So, you know, perhaps that there is not not so much a, a loyalty card that that is is kind of you know available or or on the table, but you know maybe a a, a sort of you know well i I've played in much worse places than this, and I actually quite like it here you know the 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 stability i think is is probably the word i'm looking for um if we if we don't qualify for any european competitions <laughs> that that's going to be a massive question mark because as I've alluded to earlier, we're not going to get that, you know, Corey Nielsen recruitment strategy next season. It, it, I, I would like to think that, you know, the incoming coach, you know, could maybe, you know, still sort of use him as a, a as a, a scout, you know, a, a recruitment contact perhaps. And, you know, that, that would be, that would be good because that kind of experience has been, uh, you know, absolutely invaluable to us. And, you know, to to sort of re- get to my original point, where you know the, the the part that I wanted to come in at and and kind of save Ant with, one thing we really really need in terms of you know how the recruitment is going to go next season, we need to have a coach quickly. Uh, one example I will use is that the the the. I don't know if it was if it was confirmed or if it was just a rumor, but it was a pretty strong rumor that we lost um, Guy Doucet because mm. uh, because that season there was a lot of uncertainty about about the coach 
uh, Corey Nielsen had not been signed to a new deal. Neither had Rick Strachan, and it, it was it was a poor end to that season. And you know, I went to the awards night that year, and the tension between Gary Moran and Corey Nielsen was it was plain to see. You know, it, it, it was it was uncomfortable, and it, you, we we did wonder at that point whether or not we were going to see Corey Nielsen coming back as coach. So, you know, not having a coach in place is is probably quite important. So, I I th- I think I th- I think having a, a European competition is. I, th- I think it would be nice, and it would mean that you know the quality of the imports. But, you know, we we would still have. We'd still have a decent quality of imports that would want to come to us. But I think at a more basic level, I think having a coach is actually more important than that. Uh, I mean, Craig, I'll come to you on this kind of question and put a little different slant on it. So Mm. we're not talking from a Panthers point of view, but it's kind of following on from (coughs) excuse excuse me, Um, something that (laughs) Tina said, but. Really, players players in this elite league, you know, they don't stick around too often. I mean, I can only sort of think of, you know, two, three players. You know, obviously Adam Keith at Bray, uh, Brayhead, Belfast. Matt Keith uh, at Brayhead obviously stayed for I think three or four years. Yeah. Um, three. Do you think it, like Tina says? Do you think it is they 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 like a coach or they like a city? They like the organisation. They enjoy playing there. Or do you really think players nowadays would go right? You are playing in the Continental Cup. I'll sign for another year. I, that's a tricky one. It depends on the player, I suppose. I, I think that the first set of circumstances, talking about the coach, the city, the organisation, I think that's more of a draw than say a, a tournament like the Continental Cup. I mean, I, I, which one of you guys referred to as the UEFA Cup? You know, <laughs> you know, UEFA Cup in, in football terms, the Europa League as it is now is seen as the as the little brother to the the big Champions mm. League. So you know. Uh, <laughs> I've never heard of a footballer sign for a, a football club because they're going to play in the, the Europa League, for example. Yeah. So I, I think it's more down to the coach. I think it depends on how the coach sells the club. Um, the thing with the Panthers, I mean, Corey Nielsen is going to be a huge, huge gap to fill, and you know, you guys know that better than me. You just need to look at when Paul Thompson left Coventry. He was there for thirteen years, and mm-hmm. they've been through about three or four coaches since, and. You know, I don't be surprised if I, if this happens with Nottingham as well. It takes maybe two or three coaches to get the right guy that that maybe gets the club back into into the sort of stratosphere that that Corey had the team in. Oh. So I think it just comes down to the individual player. But getting the coach in early, is, is, as Tina says, is absolutely bang on. You, you need a guy in quickly, and you know Brayhead took a bit of time in, in deliberating on John Tripp, and you know it's maybe not helped the overall season the way his preparations have gone. So that's the key thing. I'm not. I don't buy that they would stick around because they want to play in the Continental Cup. I'm, the European experience is phenomenal. You know, you know, it's great for your club to to be playing these different opposition. Whether that's as big a draw, especially in a, a tournament with the greatest of respect, the Continental Cup. I'm not really sure. Okay, thank you. Well, we've talked about coaches, so we will uh, move on to another question that comes from the Player of the Week comments. And uh, this person quite simply asks. If not Pete Russell, then who? Come on, guys and girls. We want names. So let's see whether Ant has uh, managed to save himself from drowning on the last question. And he can (laughs) answer this question. Um, I wanted to be polite and say, look, no. But, you know, I was trying to come up with a reason why. So, come on then. I mean, first part of the question... Pete Russell, yes or no, do you think? And if not Pete Russell, then come on, they want a name. Cheers, mate. Uh, hey, I, I ask the questions, you know, I don't write them. It's... <laughs> I, think, I, I think Pete Russell is a talented coach. Um, he did well in EPL last year. He's done well with GB um, in the last couple of years. However, if the Panthers were to appoint a coach who has led a team albeit that it's their first season in the top flight, but has led their team to 11th place, um, I'm not I'm not entirely happy. However, if he is announced, of course I'm going to give him my support. And I, I, you know, I will hope that we've got a gem there. Um, as to be who it would be if it wasn't Pete, 
Um, well, Clark is the obvious nod in tease, sort of being groomed to take over. Um, I'd love to see um, your brother, Aaron, um, from Cardiff. <laughs> I think he's done a fantastic job. Uh, but then I'd love the backing of someone like Kelman in there as well. Um, because I think there is much of a, a duo that that success that Cardiff are having now is as much down to the Kelman and in, in his investment group as it is with um, Coach Lord. Um, going outside of the Elite League, I couldn't tell you because, you know, I, I watch the Calgary Flames and that's it. I don't pay attention to anything else. Okay, okay. Well, uh, I, I actually texted my brother Andrew Lord today because I knew this question was coming in, and he just said he, he said no chance. I'm too busy winning league titles in Cardiff, so I suppose we can, you know, rule him out. But um, I mean, Craig, from your point of view, you know, from I don't, you know the elite league, you must you know hear a lot, see a lot of things on social media, etc. And I think. The reason that Pete Russell's name has come up because, you know, Corey announced that he was leaving and then a matter of days later, it's announced that Pete Russell is leaving at the end of the season. People put two and two together, you know, whether that equals four or whether it equals five. Do you, th- you know, is, is, I can, is Pete well, Russell, I can, can you, can you, can you see why people are putting those I two can, together? No, I, can, I definitely can. And the fact that Corey and Pete have got a really strong friendship as well, they've worked yeah. together with the GB team as well. If Corey's got any input on whose successor might be, he, he might yep. very well put, put Pete's name forward. So it's yeah, certainly it's logical in a lot of ways. Um, as far as elsewhere is concerned, I mean, you, you mentioned Clarkey. You know, is he wanting to make the, the step into to full-time coaching? We've seen mm-hmm. Adam Keith do it at Belfast and Clarkey being the legend he is. I, I dare say he'll get the full support of everybody. What about Rick Strachan? Would he fancy another crack at being his own man again? Mm-hmm. You know, Is that something he would maybe fancy doing? We, we just don't know. No, true, true. Um, Tina, uh, I don't think Ant really gave us a name apart from Clarky, but do you agree with, you know, if not Pete Russell, then do you have another name that you could throw into the mix? Uh, no, I, I don't. Uh, unfortunately, I'm uh, I'm not privy to the uh, list of CVs that allegedly lands on the uh, the desk of the Panthers organisation, <laughs> uh, you know, um, on a regular basis. So I I I, I don't have names i don't i don't really follow um, european hockey i don't know any coaches below the nhl level and uh, i know damn well we're not getting any of them uh so <laughs> you know na- names names i don't know but i i i i, I said it on on sunday i i i would quite like to see a fresh face if I'm honest, um, somebody who is, you know, very no nonsense, somebody who can do things their way and not try to, not try to, you know, follow in the footsteps of, of the man that came before. I, I, I want, I just want somebody who can, uh, you know, who, who can, can win, knows how to win. And if they're outside of uh, GB, then I would very much like uh, that, you know they understand the the, the situation uh, of of our league, and by that I mean that it's it's not all about playoffs over here. Uh, you know, until until we we make more of playoffs, and, and you know I, I completely understand the argument the other way that you know it's it, the, the it's the North American way, and it's sort of bled through that playoffs is most important, but our playoffs is over in the blink of an eye. So uh, you know until we make more of it. It, it's it's not going to be more important than the league trophy, and 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 that's that, that's just the, the the fact of the matter. Um, you know, w- w- one day maybe there'll be an extended playoff series, and you know, happy days. I would I would love to see that, and you know, maybe we can reach those sort of those, those dizzy heights of you know having a GB team uh, challenging for Olympic gold, blah blah blah. And I'm getting off topic, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I just want to see, I just want to see somebody who, who can do things their way, um, and, and just, just get on with it, and you know, and just do, do justice to, you know, the, the, the Panthers fan base. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to stick my neck out. Go so, on. Oh, so this, this ought to be good. Uh, this ought to be good. <laughs> yeah, um, and I'll fall flat on my face in a few months' time. But um, I think we're going to employ somebody that has history with the Panthers and has coaching experience in Europe. I don't know who that person is, but I just think that's the route that we're going to go down, personally. But, well, a and, name and, that's been floated around is uh, Jimmy Pack. 
obviously his coaching career at the moment. He's mm-hmm. done a pretty good job over that. I know they've invested heavily into their national team, which is why they're in um, you know the top pools now. So, but you know he's a Panthers legend, so you mm-hmm. certainly get the the fan base excited. I dare say you'd bring a lot of old faces back potentially that uh, maybe stop going now. Um, but yeah, I mean it'd be a bit of a coup. I think if we were to to nab him, yeah, I personally can't see that. I think he, I think he'll be aiming at a higher league than the elite league, personally. But I just have a feeling we'll we'll, we'll go for somebody that kind of understands what the Panthers are about. Um, but they will have coaching experience. I can't see us going down the kind of Belfast route, personally. But hey ho, you know, I mean. I know he's not won anything yet, but it's to this date it's been quite a successful season for for Adam Keith. But I suppose we'll wait and see whether they pick up any silverware in the end. But um, I suppose really we don't have long to wait, really, do we? Because what what is it? It's how many weeks until playoffs? Seven? Is it seven weeks? Craig, you should come on. You you should know how long till playoffs. Seven oh, weeks. Let me check my diary. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seven, yeah, yeah, seven well, weeks because the Challenge Cup finals in two. So yeah, it's about five weeks after that. There we go, you see, um, there you go, I got it right, pat on the back for me. <laughs> but um, we will move on to another question, and this one is more directed to, to you, I'm afraid, Craig, so Uh-oh. there you go. <laughs> um, this one comes from James Curry, and James says, why do some teams feature significantly more on the EIHL Twitter accounts than others? Figures... And then in brackets, ironically, up until the day before the Nickerson decision, show that there were 46 tweets solely about Brayhead, and that's not including Player of the Week, and Milton Keynes had a grand total of one. Surely there should be such a disparate there should not be such a disparity. So I'm going to guess, Craig, that you are going to say and that it's all Rob McGregor's fault. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Well, let's move on. No, uh, no let's listen to that question. If there is such a disparity, we're certainly not aware of it. Um, it's not something I've taken the time to actually look at. I'll I'll take James at his word on that one. Uh, Forty six. I mean, how far is he going back? You know, this is what I'm, I'm curious to know. Just when I'm, I'm listening to your question, there, how far back is he going? I mean, we we post out stories as and when we get them whether it's come from the clubs or we do it of our own uh, off our own back in terms of interviews and things like that the, the stuff we, we do at the weekend for reports and previews and such like um we do a lot of retweeting stuff as well you know if the clubs have put something out we'll, we'll repost it and retweet it and things like that so i'm not really entirely sure from what angle james is coming from all i can say you know, if there is a disparity it's not something we've noticed i don't know about 46 tweets solely about bray head you know he's, he seems to be quite thorough um in fairness to him uh i can i can only think that's that's not something we've really paid great attention to i'll look I'll, I'll look at that actually now that he's brought it up, I'll take a look at it and, and, and see what, try and see where he's coming from on it. But it's certainly, it's certainly not intended, that's for sure. I mean, from, from yours and Rob's point of view, you know, how much do you try and, or, you know, let's not forget that you, you both have, you know, normal lives, you both have other jobs, etc. So mm-hmm. it's about fitting this around your, your own schedules, etc. But how much do you try and get from sort of what the clubs provide and how much do you try and go out there and, and, you know, knock on a club store and say, look, I need some information from you because, you know, we've not spoken ab- about your team or organisation for X, Y, Z or... I mean, as often as we can, and if you take into, the, from my own point of view, I do some stuff for Brayhead as well. So, mm. you know, I'm trying to fit in about three or four different things, you know, in terms of a job and having a family as well. And it's not easy, but I certainly do my best. I mean, I've had, I mean, I've got a couple of stories lined up for this weekend. We've got the big game with Cardiff and Manchester, which I've not done anything with yet, but I fully intend to before the end of the week. You know, I mean, I've always got ideas floating around. Just finding the time. Luckily, I've got. A, I'm in a job where my boss is actually quite okay with me doing ice hockey work as long as it doesn't affect my my day-to-day stuff which is Mm. incredibly fortunate from my point of view I try not to take the mickey in that one but sometimes I can kind of I can I can push the boundary a little bit uh well I mean I certainly I certainly do the best I can with the the limited time I've got I mean a night like tonight for example I would be ordinarily sitting doing the the clan chat podcast and and putting that together and and Mm. getting in done for that 
which uh, I don't think is going to happen this week, the way it's looking. But, uh, <laughs> we managed but again, to sneak in there before. But again, it, it comes down to time. There's only so many hours in the day I can actually do it, working around everything else. I mean, just Chris, I mean, I th- go on. Sorry, Ant. Sorry, Aaron. Uh, um, Craig, can I? How much of the content comes direct from the club? Do you have to like? Sometimes, do you have to go to the club a bit more often and say, "Come on, can you give us a bit of something to work with here?" Or, or do you just literally rely on them sending you stuff? I think for, for a lot of the time, it, it's down to reliance on the club sending us stuff. Um, you know, I mean, if, if we've got the time. To, to, to actually sit and generate stuff ourselves we'll do it you know of course we will you know I always think it's it's better to try and do your own stuff but the clubs send us stuff as well and there's there's clubs that are more proactive than others in that respect I mean I can I can count about three or four clubs that have improved hugely this season in their output and that's not including the, the two teams that have come into the league um, but again whatever stuff we get whether it's come to us directly or it's out through social media we'll, we'll try and put something together from that if we can if not the best we can do is maybe retweet it and repost it and, and give it some love in that way it's you know it's it's not always easy um, to be able to, to to go to certain clubs and say can we speak to such and such again you know I mean, I've been working in the sport now for a, a good few years and th- there are clubs I've got a better relationship with than others you know for example I can go directly to players and send them a text and say how about you know you've got a few minutes of your, your, your time and they'll, you know if they can't do it They'll, they'll maybe say no, but I can do it maybe later on, which is fine. You know, we can work that in. Other clubs, you need to go through certain people to, to get to who you're looking for. Um, social media is good for that as well. You can actually go directly to the player. It's maybe a bit, maybe shouldn't admit that. But again, you know, I think, but, think, but I've never had an issue in getting guys, you know, that, that are willing to talk to us. You know, they're, they're quite happy to talk about the sport and talk about the club they're playing for and themselves as well to a certain extent. So it's all, you know, it, it, I'd love to. I'd love to generate more. Put it that way. From I can only speak for myself because it's only me here. I'd love to generate more for myself. I'd love to sit night after night and churn out four or five articles a night, but it, it's just not realistic. Um, I mean, do you, do you think just on what you say now, it made me think. Do you th- do you think it's getting better? Do you think, as in the players that are coming to this, uh, the clubs now and this league, maybe know a bit more about kind of media duties? And, and do you think even the clubs themselves are realizing that they've got to? invest a bit more into actually you know the media side of the sport and you know making your job a little bit easier to to provide content and saying yeah here you go here's a player that you can do an interview with etc yeah i think they have and i think they've you know i can think of a couple of clubs that have maybe brought students to help them in that respect that have maybe picked up that that kind of knowledge from from what they're doing in university which is helpful because again you know, team owners and, and GMs maybe aren't that way orientated. Well, you know, the media is something that they'll think about straight away. Whereas they've got someone there that can that can help them. I mean, we we try and advise as best we can. Not only in my case with Brayhead, but for for you know through the elite league board as well about certain things, about when things go out. They, they, you know, try and get the, the most traffic at certain times in the day and things like that. When we know it will be a, a kind of peak time. You know, if it's first thing in the morning when people are heading to their work or so early evening when people are heading home from their work or even, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night when a lot of people are, are online as well. It's that's the way I see it. It's clubs have improved. You know, I, I don't take anything away from, from what they've done. A lot of the clubs are a great help as well. So I think there is more knowledge out there about about the media side of it and I think it's good that they're bringing in certainly younger people younger people listen to me um, <laughs> to come in and, and help advise on that you know I think that's definitely a good thing and it, it helps the clubs become a bit more savvy as well especially now when we're trying to build the brand but I hate that word brand build the sport <laughs> in the UK and, and get it out there yeah I mean I'm just finally before we kind of move on to another question while we're we're talking about it you know I think correct me if I'm wrong but is it two years now you and Rob have been in the job um, this is your second season, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, Rob, I mean, I think Rob, Rob got taken on. I think, in fact, no, I think we both got taken on just after the playoffs. I got kind of drafted in at the on the playoff final day two years ago to help out with online stuff because I, th- I was I was covering Fife and Fife obviously mm. got put out in the semi final, so I was at a bit of a loose end at the final. And, <laughs> and, and Seth <laughs> Seth Bennett at the time asked me to help out, so yeah, it kind of grew from there. I mean, how are you finding it? Is it something that, you know, like you've said, you know, you've got a family, you've got another job, etc. Is it is it just something that you just love doing? And like you say, you want to grow the sport. So are you enjoying it? Is it something that you think can really 
move on in the next two to five years? Truthfully, I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the contact with the teams. I love the contact with the coaches and the players. I love doing it. The only thing I would like is more time to do it, you know, if, if it meant a full-time role, hint, hint. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean I, it's great. You know, I, I've, I mean, I used to do my my website a few years ago, Slapshot Scotland, which is no longer going, yeah. and obviously this has led into what I'm doing now. And even then, you know, it was great to be involved with the teams and the players and everything. I get a real buzz off getting the story and, and getting it out there, knowing that people are reading it and they're enjoying it. And I, I still love the interaction as well. It's, you know, these last two years I've, I've really enjoyed and, and I know Rob has as well. And the two of us are actually quite, we feel quite privileged that we've we've been given this opportunity. Okie dokie. Well, we will uh, move on to some of the questions uh, that we've had sent in and we will go back to Phil Rawlings, who... Uh, was a little bit greedy and asked another question, but we'll sneak it in there and uh, we'll ask anyway. But uh, Phil said again, on a few occasions, we were told this team would click and demolish an opposition team. Is the fact it has not happened to date an issue of talent or tactics or something else? Tina Taylor, you can answer that one. Oh, thank you very much, Aaron Lord. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's the... The sixty-four thousand dollar question, really, isn't it? Uh, anybody who could answer that could probably have, you know, got on the coaching staff for the Panthers this season. Um, not, not that I want to drop him in it, but I think you know I, I, our very own Andy Haywood has, has said that once or twice that you know he he, he was absolutely convinced that at some point mm. the team were just gonna it was just gonna happen and all of a sudden it was just gonna, we were just gonna kick on and it was it was gonna be amazing it was gonna be a beautiful thing to watch. Um, yeah, it it just hasn't, you know. We we we've we've got to the point where, you know, we've been tearing our hair out about it, and uh, you know, we've had a, a few angry podcasts this season, and um, you know, we we just don't, we just we just don't know, do we? <laughs> we just, just, no. I mean, that's that, that that's the that's the thing, you know. We there's we, we've got a team that has got all the seemingly got all the talent. We we, we did seem to have, we seem to have all the answers at the beginning of the season and then it just dropped like a stone in December you know I mean we, every year we make the joke about you know the curse of Christmas and you know can can we just uh, you know tell the players that Christmas doesn't exist and uh, you know carry on playing in December like we we do for the first two or three months of the season mm. I just it, it just seems to have been extra special this season you know I mean <laughs> the, 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 the 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 sheer amount of games that we dropped in December was was heartbreaking, and it, I, I, you know, it's, I, I'm sure something's happened. Something must have happened because it was just so sudden. You know, we were doing so well, and then all of a sudden we weren't. So something went wrong. And it, it feels like it's something that, that you know we're we're not privy to. Nobody's talking about, and uh, you know, it just. It, it just feels, it, it feels like it's completely out of control, of you know, out of the fans' control. It's out of the fans' mm. remit. Um, you know, possibly need to know, and we didn't. <laughs> so I just, it, it's 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 really, it was just, it was just really odd. I, I don't think it's an issue of of talent. That's one thing I can. I, I I can say from my own perspective and and you know my opinion I I 100% don't think it's an issue of talent because we saw the talent that we had on show it you know August September October and and you know most of November um and the you know the the, the tactics seemed to be sound enough at the beginning of the season so you know is it is it internal? Is it you know outside factors? Is it on ice? Is it off ice? Is as somebody upset somebody else in the dressing room? You know it's it's it's, it's odd. It, it's, it's 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 just really odd. And I personally do not have an explanation. And I know that doesn't really answer the question, uh, but I, I I'm genuinely at a loss to to to, to give that question. Um, uh, an answer. I just, I just genuinely don't have one. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come, an yeah, well, I'll come to you. Just, I mean, you can obviously say your answer as well, but I've just got a different slant on it because this is a conversation that 
I've had on the concourse, you know, throughout the season many, many times in the sense of, oh, we're looking really good. You know, we are going to score five, six, seven goals. We are going to tear this team apart. But then, you know, some of my friends go, but you look at our past, you know, kind of history and we've only scraped games by one goal, two goals max. You know, we've had a lot of overtime wins, etc. going way back in the season. So is it purely you know, the European adventure that got all our hopes up and thought, do you know what, we are going to tear a team apart. It doesn't matter that we've, you know, our last five games, we've, we've won three in overtime, you know, one in a penalty shot and then the other one in regulation by one or two goals. This team has got it. Or, you know, have we just kind of been blinkered in that sense? Well, I think at the time, um, we, were, we were finding ways to win. Um, and for me, that's the sign of a good team. We weren't playing particularly, you know, top form every game, but we were finding ways to win, whether it be overtime or a penalty shot. Um, I, I always thought and felt that this team had more, as we've shown, and we keep going back onto it. It's, we showed it in the Champions League. You cannot play like that. Um, for one-off games maybe but you cannot play like that through a whole series of games um, and be a bad team Um, and I was convinced if we'd taken that form and that passion that commitment um, into the Elite League we would have been blowing teams away whether they it was a case of roles reversal which we've, we've talked about as well in that we've gone from being you know the massive underdogs to like it or not we are one of the big names in the Elite League, we are one of those teams that, you know, every other team you'd love love to see us lose. They love to beat you. Um, and I don't think the players were able to adjust or haven't been able to adjust from um, the expectations of us as a, as a um, fan base um, compared to when you're going in the Champions League and you're going in. Look, when was the last time you saw a stand innovation for a team that got beat 6-1 on aggregate? I mean, will that ever happen again? It was, you know, phenomenal response. Um, yeah. And then, you know, you turn it on your head and then you, you're scraping results some some weeks and then you're getting absolutely... You know, um, taking the mickey, I'm trying to say it politely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're getting absolutely mullered by your nearest and dearest. Or you go down to Cardiff and it, you might as well have just stuck the kids on. Because you know, we, we we were playing like headless chickens. Um, the answer, my friend, um, is not in the wind. It's uh, given to us by David Carnell on the next question. So if you wanted to, there's there's your segue. <laughs> well, sorry, can I jump in here? Just unless you, you on, guys are sitting here, and obviously I'd like to think I'm going to put a different angle on it. You're talking about. You know, maybe things that have happened internally, the European adventure. You know, and as as an outsider kind of looking in, I was alarmed at the kind of dip in form. Could it not be something as simplistic as the other teams in around the league have improved? You know, the fact that the Cardiff mm. have kept going what they did last year. Belfast, it can be argued, they're a better team than last year. Steelers have been a bit hot and cold this year, but can still can still do it in any given night. The new teams have come in, have, have performed well. Certainly Guildford have. Milton Keynes started off that way, but have kind of fell away a wee bit. Brayhead have been hot and cold. Fife have been have been great this season for the most part. Is it, is it not a case of maybe quality around the league as well? Uh, how how very dare you? How very dare you come into this with a balanced, a ba- a balanced viewpoint? <laughs> Um, but then, but then, as a, as, as a, a, a top club, so to speak, you have to react to everybody else getting better as well. So you should be improving week on week, um, year on year. It's no good for a, a team to go. Oh yeah, we look, we won the league in two thousand and whatever it was, thirteen was it? So yeah, long, yeah. thirteen. Yeah, and and then we've just coasted, and then you just coast from then because yeah, we've done what we need to do, so everybody else can catch us up now. You have to improve, um, and I'm. I, I know I keep going there, but I'm going to because it's obviously one of my main passions. Look at what Fergie did at United. Ah, where we go. (laughs) Yeah, but listen. (laughs) But season in, season out, whether we won the uh, we won the treble in '99, we went out, won the league by like January the next year because Fergie went out and improved the team, 
and he did that, and he knew that he had to do that season in, season out. So that is something I think the Panthers haven't done, is go for it. Whereas the rest of the team, like Craig rightly points out, the rest of the teams in the league have improved. Um, there's one or two that have you know, had a phenomenal, phenomenal season um, with regards to Fife and Guildford. Mm. Who had... Uh... Who had 9.35 when Ant mentioned Fergie? Because uh, you've just won 50p. So congratulations. Um, I mean... Sorry. It's all right. I'm only joking, mate. But I think, you know, obviously you make a good point, Craig. But do you think with the Panthers' European adventure, it made... You talk about teams improving, obviously, you know, around the league. But do you think that gave them a bit of extra spice to say, we are going to raise our game even more against the Panthers? Because I think, I mean... You know, you mentioned talk, looking at it from an outside point of view. I think a lot of, you know, the Panthers, if they hold their hands up and halfway through the European adventure, they're going, we're going to win the league. We're going to win the league. We're, you know, we're beating these teams. We're competing at this level. We've, we've got to win the league. It's, you know, it might be a little naive at the time. And when you look back, it's you're caught up in the moment. But do you think just our, our our adventure in in Europe and the fact of the results that we got made people across the league go well do you know what I'm, I'm, I'm we're going to compete against you we are going to give you a game and like and has said maybe we just hasn't we haven't like risen to the occasion on on enough nights quite possibly um you know the, the displays in Europe were, were absolutely impressive and and perhaps from that point of view the other teams looked at that and thought hmm okay um, you know, and, and up their game, uh, as you point out, that's certainly that's certainly possible. I wouldn't I wouldn't take that away from them. But uh, someone made the point earlier about the fact that you know, you know, building on that, building on that European uh, that European campaign by being able to take that into the domestic game and keeping that going. I I, I thought, I mean, I I chose. I thought Belfast would win the league this year, um, back at the start of the season. But when I saw how well Panthers were doing in the CHL, it kind of made me doubt that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Because I thought, my goodness, you know, Corey's really, you know, pulled together a really good team, and then, for want of a better expression, the backside fell out of the, the domestic <laughs> campaign in December. So it, it mm. kind of makes you makes you think. I, I mean, yeah, I, I would agree. I, I would agree. I think they made themselves maybe a target because of how well they did um, early in the season. That, that maybe teams that were able to study that, analyze that, that kind of performance, and and be able to nullify that. To great effect, or maybe it's a form thing. I, I just don't know, but certainly, I, I certainly wouldn't rule it out. Mm. Um, okay, well, as Ant said many minutes ago, we will sink on to David Carnell's question. Um, and David asks, "Why have we only won two games when Mosley has been out of the lineup? He's played thirty-eight games. We've won twenty-six. Panthers have played fifty-two and won twenty-eight. And that includes, obviously, the Challenge Cup and the league games. Coincidence or more to it, Tina Taylor? Um, I don't... Well, I, I, I'm not a massive believer in a coincidence. I, 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 I Well, you know, horror of horrors, you know. Do, do we have... Do we perhaps have a franchise player? You know, is 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 there more to Evan Mosey than just the fact he can skate a bit quick? Uh, you know, it, it, the the facts are there. You know, D- David's David's you know done the figures. Uh, I I had a look through all the games. Uh, I, I, I you know had a look at the at the cup games as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> so we've uh, yeah it's it, it's startling. You know, to you, you, you know, you, you notice when he's not on the ice because mm. you know he, he has just got that fantastic injection of speed, and that is what you notice about him first of all. But the, <laughs> presented with with the numbers that that we we have been presented with, it it tells its own story, really, doesn't it? It's, I mean, just uh, just. On Evan's numbers, mm-hmm. um, you know, he's currently ninth, you know, top point scorer. So he's the ninth scorer with 19 points in total, mm-hmm. 10 assists, 9 goals from mm-hmm. 30 games played, which is just over, you know, 
well, Polini is top with yep. uh, 37, and he's played 42 games to Evan Moses' 30. Mm. So we're not, uh, you know, with all due respect to obviously Moses, we're not talking about somebody that is in our top three of point scorers. Now, obviously, he's missed 12 games compared to Polini, but even if he was a point a game there, it takes him to 31, which would make him fifth point mm. scorer. But the th- I, I mean, mean, you know. The- yeah, the one thing I would say about about Evan Mosey is he's never been a, a out and out goal scorer. He's mm. never he's never been, you know, massive on the points production. He, I, I you know, he's he's more of a. I mean, let's let's just let's compare him perhaps maybe to Lacko. You know, once upon a time, I think we all had, you know, a lot of the Panthers fan base had a lot of high hopes that, that Lacko was just was going to be like the next David Clark. He was going to be, you know, he was going to be a goal scorer. He was, you know, he was going to absolutely light it up. He, he, he did have, and, and, you know, initially, that's, that's sort of where, it, you know, his career pointed to. He was putting goals away. He was putting points up uh, and, and contributing in that sort of fashion. However, when his points production started to drop off, Everybody was writing him. You know, people were queuing up to write him off. He's a terrible hockey player just because he's not scoring points. But that's not true. Um, mm. You know, we, we've we, we've seen. I mean, you know, well, all, albeit, you know, we, we've we've had a couple of we, we've had a few quiet years from Lacko. But just look at the other parts of his game that he has improved. Now, you know, he, he he's maybe you know that type of player him him and Evan Mosey that type of player you know the, the, in you know you albeit one's you know a, a British player one's an import if Evan Mosey was putting up the kind of points that you know for example Brett Pellini was putting up right now he probably wouldn't he, he probably wouldn't have left um Rockford we probably oh. wouldn't have had the, the opportunity to re-sign him but you know that's I think that's probably what they wanted from him they they wanted more points from him but you know i mean are we perhaps getting something different are we are we getting a player who is you know less less punch and more workhorse are we getting somebody who contributes something different you know i mean just 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 to you know maybe maybe put a th- put a a question out there ever mosey uh, isn't you know putting putting all the points on the board? So why are we not kicking him like we have done in the past with Rob Blakovich? It's it, it you know it's it, perhaps it's because there's more to him than than just scoring points. But, As in a fan base. Well, mean? yeah, I, mm. yeah. Per, perhaps perhaps there is more to him, and. Mm. You know, it's it. As I say, the numbers are there. That's that's not an opinion. That is a fact. That you know, we we only, we do, you know, what 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 was it that, that yeah we, we only, so won, we only two won two games. games yeah. yeah, when mm. Mosey was injured. It's yeah. That that's not <laughs> opinion. That's fact. That's not something you can dispute. And yeah, my my answer is perhaps there's more to Evan Mosey than we actually give him credit for. I mean, Craig, I'll come to you from a general kind of point of view. It's when you look at that kind of stack stat of two games, uh, only one when when a player and just say a player. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, we're talking about Mosey, but <sighs> sure, you know, as a club and and even as a coach, you don't want to be, you know, that reliant on one player, surely, do you? That if, if they do get injured or, or suspended, that... You just see a massive drop in 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 you know W's on the board. Absolutely, and you know, and, and Moses, you know, going by those figures, I mean, I, I didn't realise he'd missed that many games. So that's that's quite a startling stat, actually, from a Panthers mm-hmm. point of view. The fact that they've only won two games in what was that fourteen, I think, if my maths is correct. Maths isn't my strong point, but I mean, <laughs> he's, he's he's clearly an, an influential player um, for the team. I mean, the chap asking the question says coincidence or more to it. Well, the more to it, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors. It'll be silly of us to sit here and speculate. That's that's for other people to to decide. 
I'm sure there's a there's a perfectly good reason. It could just be um, a, a collective loss of form from the other guys as well. Maybe it is the fact. Maybe Mosey is that component in the in the centre of it all that's that makes the difference. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't see the Panthers enough to be able to to comment on that. But I, th- I just think that you know, I haven't seen that start. I mean, that's that's quite something. I would hope mm. that um, you know. Maybe it should come to the other the other guys if if Mosey is the the main component here. It should be up to the other guys to to step up and go right. Well, he's not here, so we need to up our game a little bit. We need to take a little bit more responsibility on and try and plug that gap. And it seems clear that that going by that start, and I'm only purely taking it on that start that that's maybe the case. Yeah, I mean, for looking at those stats, you know, you can take it two two ways, can't you? Really, that um, a there might be a little bit more to it, but um, basically, if facts are facts, Mosey should be going to, you know, Gary Moran at the end of the season and say, "I want double my wages, otherwise you're going to lose more games if I'm not here." But um, and what what what's your take on it? Do you you know? I mean, this is a guy that yes, isn't top point scorer, but you look at his speed and 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 you look at the lines that he's been on at the start of the season. He scored the crucial goal for when we won, you know, the, the Challenge Cup a couple of seasons ago when he was here last. Um, I, I, I think it's fair to say we missed him last year when he wasn't here. I'm pretty certain that if we, you know, chose not to re-sign him, then the other 11 teams in the Elite League, if they could afford him, would, would sign him up. Um, but do you think it is a coincidence or, or there, there's just maybe a little bit more to it? I think there probably is a little bit more to it, like Tina said. Um, I think the, w- the one thing that hasn't been mentioned so far is th- his personality. Um, Mosey himself is obviously a very likable person you know, from the outside looking in. Um, on the, the couple of occasions that uh, I have met him, he's, he's always taken time to speak to people. And I can imagine that sort of enthusiasm, uh, that sort of, sort of bubbly personality would rub off well on, on the rest of the team. Um, I don't think that's the reason why we went on a massive losing spree with just being him out of the team. Because obviously, you'd think he'd still be around the the, the locker room and, and what have you. You'd, you'd hope yeah. so. Um, but I, th- I think I can't now. Apologies, but I can't remember if John actually mentioned this on the podcast on Sunday or if it's something we've chatted about. Yeah, I think, it, um, and I think that's possibly that possibly may have prompted David's question. Um, to, yeah, to be it's honest. the um, it's the franchise thing. That Tina mentioned is like, is it is Mosey a player that you would build a team around? Um, I mean, it's quite obvious. We've heard rumours that um, there were other teams interested in signing him when he became available, but he waited, you know, for our answer first, which is great show of loyalty from him. Um, so, I mean, he is a fantastic player, and don't. It's not all about speed. It's not like when he when he first came in and he took us all by surprise because he was so damn quick. Um, he's built on that. Um, you don't play in the AHL if you're if you're a mug. Um, you know he, he's, he's proven that he's a decent hockey player um, as well, and I think he's a much better player today than we have seen in the past. And hopefully, he's a player that we can keep for uh, many a year and be our be our, another sort of Brandon Benedict plays another sort of six seven seasons for us. That would be nice. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, um, good old Benny, legend. Um, well, obviously, I think um, when you talk about, you know, the fact of building a team around Mosey, I think if you look back to last season when we were, you know, we signed Mosey a two-year deal, we signed, you know, Cam to a two-year deal, but obviously things change, etc. I think you could really see that maybe the players that we'd signed to go alongside those players didn't quite fit in with the other players that we had to sign. So, I think you can potentially build a team around somebody, especially like Evan Mosey. Um, but, you know, let's hope, uh, looking at those stats, that he stays fit for the remainder of the season and gives us a chance of um, qualifying for the playoffs and winning the playoffs, because then that means that we'll qualify for the Continental Cup, which then means that potentially imports will stay with us. So we will move on to the... get to go on holiday, you mean? <laughs> yes, exactly. That was basically what I was building to. We get to go on another European tour. Yes, Aaron wants um, to go on a European tour. <laughs> I want to go on a European tour. Basically, that's the end of it. Let's you know get that out there right away. Um, but I will only be supporting the Nottingham Panthers on a European tour. 
I'm afraid to say. Right, let's move on to the final question because this is an interesting question, especially as we are lucky to have Craig with us as well um, tonight. This is from Jenny Muir. And Jenny says, in an ideal world, casting aside any practical considerations, <laughs> that'll be fun, you currently have to make, <laughs> what would you like to be able to do with the Elite League media? It's a question for Craig, but I'm also interested in what the TCW panel would like to see from the Elite League media if there were no limits. So, Craig, I'm going to come to you last on this question. Okay. And then we will get the TCW's panel because their suggestions will probably be rubbish. And then you can tell us actually what uh, you would like personally and then maybe what you actually think is reasonable for the next season or two. But, um, Ant, I'll let you drown in this question first. And <laughs> Cheers, then Tina Al. can rescue you again. Um, so... um, uh, I want my um, MTV, so to speak. Um, TV deal. Simple enough. Um, I'll... In, if it, money was no object and we could dictate the sort of programming we wanted, I'd love a proper style match of the day type thing where you have maybe one main game with extended highlights with analysis afterwards and then highlights of the other games with analysis afterwards um, and then maybe a feature on what's happening this week, etc., etc., as well as re- regular live games. Um, that would be my number one ideal thing media-wise. Um, okie dokie and let me guess you'd probably want Sir Alex Ferguson to host that maybe yeah uh, he's probably got something to do with uh, hockey in the past he's Scottish <laughs> maybe it's more curly I was going to say yeah it's more, more likely to be curly than ice hockey to be fair <laughs> okie dokie so obviously a TV deal um, which gets mentioned uh, well you know quite regularly when talking about Elite League um, throughout the seasons but Maybe Craig can give us, you know, something on that in a minute. But Tina, what would you like to see in an ideal world? Um, if if Rob McGregor happens to listen to this, he'll probably have a little giggle to himself because he knows I've, uh, I've I've whinged and bitched about this a little bit. Uh, I I would <laughs> I would very much like to see um, all of the stats from all of the Elite League seasons on the Elite League webpage because uh, because because I'm a bit of a geek about it. Um, you, know, you like I mean, your graphs, don't I you? I do. I like, I like my stats and my graphs and my numbers and such. And I'd really, I'd, I'd just really like to see that all, you know, readily available to anybody who wants to have a look at it. I know the, the, the Statos do do record everything and I know that they, they, they put the milestones out every week and, you know, tweet out little factoids here and there. But I would, I would just like to have all of the game sheets, you know, all in there, all of the stats, and you can just, you know, I mean, for, for somebody like me who hasn't been a fan for very long, I, I would be, I, I would love to be able to see the stuff that is pre me as a fan, you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to, I mean, you know, but pre Elite League, it w- would obviously be a little bit difficult because, you know, you've no idea who the heck keeps any of that anymore, but, you know, the, the, you know, controlling what you can control, yeah, I, I, I would just, I would love, I would love to see that. Um, so yeah, that 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 would be uh, my my two penny worth uh, for for what I would like to see uh, if it, for uh, you know it, 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 in in a sort of broader sense of, of media because I I appreciate that's not it, it it's possibly not under the remit of uh, of Craig and Rob. Okay, okay. I hope you're you're writing this down, Craig, on your little notepad. Oh, I'm, I'm um, feverishly, feverishly writing away in a notepad here as we speak. <laughs> Well, quickly, before you just answer answer this question, uh, uh, Craig, I will update the listeners that the Steelers have lost tonight against the Devils. They were at home against the Devils at the, uh, I think, is it the Fly DSA Arena? Yes, I believe um, so, yes. And unfortunately, that Ben Bounds shut out the Steelers and the Devils won 3-0, which means they open up a 10-point lead at the top. So it's looking pretty uh, pretty rosy up there if you're a Devil fan. Um, but yes, so Devils won 3-0 against the Steelers tonight. But let's get back to Ask TCW and Craig. Uh, kind of two sides, if you, if you don't mind, and, and, and if you can answer this in two kind of sides. Mm. You know, obviously, as you mentioned earlier, if you could get a full-time job and, and you were, you know, on it full time, what would you like to do with it? And then maybe if you can just kind of say what you think is possible 
uh, to do over the next couple of seasons? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, if I had, uh, if I was lucky enough to be given the post full time, I'd certainly like to do more in the way of stories that are, that are out there in terms of what the, the clubs are sending us and do stuff for ourselves. I'd like to visit around all the clubs and see everybody and make regular contact um, with the clubs and, and be able to, to meet them on a more face-to-face basis. I don't always get to do that. Um, more Darfree features as well. I ran a thing earlier in the season, the 2 plus 10. Um, on mm-hmm. the Elite League website, and that's kind of that's kind of dried up just now through one or two other things as well. A podcast that's that's went by the wayside as well due to time commitments. Also, so I mean, all these things in an ideal world with uh, all the time in the world is fantastic. The podcast is something I'd like to bring back up again. I've mentioned it to Rob on a couple of occasions. Maybe not so much the format we did it in before, more like the the format I've got going with Brayhead at the moment, where I'm recording interviews and then uh, you know we can put links in between them and mm-hmm. things like that. But again, that comes down to time and, and organisation and putting that together um, so you know more time <laughs> more time to do <laughs> all this stuff I mean I dare say bringing back things like 2 plus 10 isn't you know isn't completely out with the realms of possibility I can maybe get a few features in um, a few more features in for next season as well from my point of view maybe I'd try and be a little bit more organised um, I'm, I'm not the most organised of people so that, that's something I should really um, discipline myself with a little bit better so, yeah, I, I would certainly like to put more stuff out there. I'd love to be able to, to learn about video, uh, doing video stuff and things like that. That's something I'm not mm. very, if I'm not getting next to no knowledge on it, basically. Um, I've, I've only just discovered how to do GIFs, which was a great day. Um, <laughs> my two-year-old daughter's confusion when I'm <laughs> celebrating and I'm interrupting her watching Peppa Pig. So, you know. <laughs> Make a so, GIF of Peppa Pig and then she'll just love you forever. <laughs> Well, unless he comes dripping in ice cream, that's something else. <laughs> but uh, no, it's. I mean, I'm, I'm learning things gradually as I go. It's getting the chance to be able to utilise that as best I can. I mean, the audio thing. I mean, audio is something I've learned more about this year in terms of, you know, not only doing well, doing interviews is something I've done for a while anyway, but actually clipping audio, trimming it, putting it in as, as part of them. I and this is where the clan chat things come in. Come in, I do for Brayhead, learning to do that, putting a show to, together. There's still things I'm not overly great with I'm still quite limited in that respect but I've, I've learned a lot from that point of view so certainly a lot more output <clears throat> excuse me in that in that front I think would be would be great um, but uh, you know it's it's time that's all it is it's yeah. time yeah it's that magic watch isn't it to stop time mm-hmm. but if I have one piece of advice don't do a podcast where you just talk and you know, just live. Don't do it live. Nobody listens. It's it's pointless. <laughs> stick to stick to your ones where you have interviews with players and just do links in between. There's um, far too there's far too much to go wrong in a live podcast, Craig. Only only yeah. only somebody clinically insane would attempt this sort of thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> too right. Um, well, that kind of brings us to the end of uh, the questions. But I think while we've got you on, Craig, just to kind of finally wrap up, if you don't mind, um, what do you what do you kind of foresee for the remainder of the elite league season from? the league point of view and then obviously the challenge cups coming up and and then the playoffs do you do you think it's just going to grow strength to strength and and it's looking pretty good for Cardiff isn't it really absolutely i mean the, the, i mean you mentioned that result tonight you know it's it's hard to see past cardiff in terms of where the the title's going um, Belfast have, have suffered quite a quite a, a slump recently that have allowed Manchester to come back on board. We've also saw Fife uh, the weekend there when the, the Gardner Conference. I'm absolutely delighted for them um, to, to have gone on and, and do that. But the race for the playoffs is certainly interesting. You know, Nottingham are seventh place. That they won't tumble out of that. So you're looking at Brayhead, Coventry, and Dundee as we talked about earlier in that uh, that last uh, that last playoff spot. That's going to be interesting. Um, certainly Brayhead and Dundee play each other on Saturday so you know I think the, the destination of the points in that one could certainly go a long way in deciding where it's going to go Challenge Cup finals in a couple of weeks I'll be in Cardiff for that myself and Robert are heading to, to Cardiff to, to cover that um, mm. the game between Cardiff and Belfast I'm getting the, the, the playoff programme together just now as well I've sent a few emails out while I've been actually been on air tonight to uh, to start mm. getting things together for that um, and of course we've got the actual weekend itself which is always a, a joy so for Rob and I you know it's, it's just going to be busy 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 from now on in but you know what we love it and that's the main thing so we will <laughs> end it there but um, my thanks goes to Ant for joining us this evening not a problem. Uh, my thanks also goes to Tina Taylor. TTFN. 
And finally, uh, thank you very much to Craig Anderson. As he says there, he's even been working while he's been answering these questions. So we do really appreciate appreciate you coming on, Craig, and hopefully you've enjoyed answering some of the uh, the questions as well. Yeah, very much so. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it makes a change for what I usually do on a Wednesday, that's for sure. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure, but mainly thank you very much if you have listened to this podcast. We will, we will be back with another Ask TCW podcast in the near future. But until then, thank you very much for listening and goodbye. This edition of the Cat's Whiskers podcast was brought to you by the Bunkers Hill Hockley.